What is it, my friends? So let's talk about Netflix's latest Curon. Curon is basically your appetizer right before we get into Dark Season 3, which I will be doing a video on Season 1 and 2 this week. So if you want to know when that drops, you might as well subscribe. You might as well like this video, turn on the bell for notifications. I mean, come on. You want to know when that drops? You got to be subscribed. But I'll also be dropping a ending explain because you know how we got to do it. But let's talk about Kiron now, which is pretty much a, I would say, cousin of Dark in a way. In a way, I'm not even saying it's the same thing, so don't even get me started on that if you're going to start telling me that I don't know shit, because I'm just saying it's a cousin of sorts. So Kiron basically is a show that deals with a mother going back to her old town with her children and what ends up happening is they start to see that this town has a sort of curse to it and nothing is what it seems and nobody might actually be who they say they are because this curse actually is able to get your shadow of yourself and that shadow of yourself basically goes after you and tries to take over your life and my goodness did we just watch us in Europe that's exactly how this feels right so Anyways, let's just cut right into the ending, or let's talk about the curse itself, because I think you gotta talk about the curse itself, right, for it to make sense. The curse takes the form of someone from the town, and what they explain is that when we are created, or we are pretty much on this planet, there are two parts of ourselves. There is us, and then there is the shadow. And then the shadow pretty much is able to re-emerge when the bells in the town go, and this shadow is the polar opposite of who you are. So if you're a pretty outgoing person, this shadow will be a pretty reserved person, vice versa. And we see that play out with different people in the town as we get into the season. And it basically is like this shadow will go out and try to kill you because they want to take over your life. You can try and kill the shadow, but the shadow will just reemerge from the... Um, lake once again so there's pretty much no stopping the shadow unless you like chain it up and keep it somewhere which is what we see happen so you pretty much have to domesticate your shadow and that's something that they also touch upon in the series is that is it possible to domesticate a shadow and for them to live a normal life amongst real people and the answer is yes we see that with a couple of shadows that have done this and we'll get more into that into the end so what we come to find out is that the mother of the children actually had a clone of herself that was the one that ended up killing her mother and the father has actually kept the clone chained up because if he were to kill the clone or if they were to just get rid of the clone it would just keep on coming back and try and go after Anna and so the only way to really keep her safe is to keep this um, clone locked away and just pretty much do that until I mean one of them runs out of battery right I don't know if that was the best analogy anyways what we end up realizing as well is that and actually also take over the host well not the host because the real version's life and that's exactly what happens to Albert now Albert and Anna had a sort of thing back then before Anna left the town and we can pretty much through hints and all of this figure it out that the kids that Anna has are actually Albert's but she just lied to him in order for like the pain or all of that not to be too much on him and that's how she was able to leave so it's pretty weird when you see the kids and of Anna interact with the kids of Albert especially because you're pretty much like they are kind of like half siblings right so the real Albert was actually in love with Anna but after Anna left Clara, who is another person that we meet here, was actually having feelings for him. And what ends up happening is one in outing, the clone of Albert kills him. And Clara is pretty much like, this is my moment because now I can be with the person I love. Even if this is just their clone that doesn't know exactly what it wants, you know. So she pretty much does this, but she later comes to accept her fate that she's been living a lie. When her clone finally shows up for Clara... She pretty much gets killed, and that's pretty much her saying, like, ah, I messed up big time, so I'd rather die. By the end of the season, the kids try and go to find their real parents, but what ends up happening is an event that pretty much is going to end in tragedy and leaves us with a very, very dark ending. 
They enter a bunker where they believe that the real Anna has been kept now, and what we see is that the clone Albert and the clone Anna head there as well, and we start to pretty much see everything fall apart because the real Anna ends up escaping and the clone Anna becomes angry because she's pretty much like the clone Albert is really just keeping her alive because that's who he really loves and pretty much I could have ended all of this but he didn't let me. So when the kids split up both groups end up finding one of the Annas. So we have a crossroads thing where both Annas are fighting each other at the end and the clone Albert ends up showing up and he's pretty much like I don't love either of you because the Albert real one loved the real Anna so how can I love the real Anna and everything's pretty much a lie that's how he feels so he ends up shooting both of them right before he kills himself too and this is all happening in front of the kids so you can imagine major major disturbance for them and we realize that the clone Anna isn't actually dead and she tries to escape but as she's trying to escape Morrow keeps her at gunpoint and she's basically like I'm the one that protected you from your father quote unquote father Pietro because I think that the real father of the kids is actually Albert but she's basically saying that she was protecting them from them because we find out that Morrow uh, had been basically abused by Pietro and he was pretty much a douchebag and that's the reason that she killed him earlier in the season. And that's something that the real Anna never confronted as she says. She actually does still end up falling to her death and that's it for that. We end up seeing clone Clara taking the kids to the uh, graveyard of the real Albert. And they pretty much are there just like, damn, we were raised by a clone this whole time. Mickey and Arya end up hearing the bells. So that means that they are going to be getting copies of themselves coming for them. But the lake is frozen as we see in the end. So the copies just keep drowning and dying. And that's pretty much the ending right there. So, damn, what a dark ending, right? We just see these clones. Whether they're real or not, they still are living. And it kind of is a pretty bleak ending the way you see it all happen. So, as we know, and it's explained by Ober that this is a curse that's going to keep on going on. And there is no stopping it. So we're pretty much going to get a season 2. That's going to have the clones of Mickey and Daria. And who knows who else coming. And I just don't see how they would be able to finish the curse or not. It will be interesting. And I think that's exactly what the next season will be tackling on. Is how do we finish all of this so nothing like this happens again. Because I'm pretty sure that the lake isn't done yet. It looks like everything's just getting started. And this curse is pretty much intensified now. So very, very dark ending. And I wonder if we will get any uh, resolution towards the whole Albert being the real dad of the other kids. And what that actually will mean come the future as well. I don't know if this is just something that can be uh, wrapped up in one season. And this is how they want it to end it. Because I really feel... They were really going towards more of trying to get like to the bottom of the curse and everything. So we could see the second season sort of serve as a prequel of sorts as well. And maybe more explanation towards the curse and the town and all of that. Then we went into season one. And also sort of be a continuation where they're trying to figure out what is the next step. And what is needed to be done in order to move ahead of this. As I said, a very very appetizer type show for what comes from dark and something that pretty much lies there with us as well where we have a copy of ourselves that's trying to take over our life and that copy is a very different type of person or whatever you want to call it than we are so i think it's very interesting how the show sets up that dynamic because i think all of us have a sort of um person deep down that we aren't but it's deep down in us as well so i don't know I, I will try to understand more what the bigger uh picture of it all is and maybe i'll do a video on that but anyways the ending pretty much just leaves us um to wonder what comes next and what i think comes next is definitely trying to figure out how to break the curse and how to liberate the town itself what are your thoughts on Kiron? Are you excited for a season two or did you not like the show? It's getting a pretty good mix of reviews here and there with many people saying it's pretty much like eh.
But anyways, as I said, a dark ending explain coming this week as well as a recap right before season three premieres. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up on the road to 15 down subscribers. We are so close. Let's get to it. And as always, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Anchor, Twitch, all of that. And I'll see all of you next time. Stay safe, stay positive.